We will now begin session seven on development corporations. As a moderator, His Excellency Siswo Pramono. You may now have the floor, Excellency. Thank you very much. I think we are coming to the final panel of today. Uh, with me, I have already uh, His Excellency Pambang Pochonekoro, Minister of National Development Planning, Chairman of National Planning Agency, to my left. And then we also have, uh, next to uh, His Excellency Pambang, is uh, Minister uh, Finsen uh, Seratse, the Minister of Infrastructure and Housing Development in Botswana. And then next to him, we have uh, His Excellency Abdi uh, Adam Hosu, Minister of Public Works, Reconstruction and Housing of uh, uh, Somalia. And then uh, we have, of course, uh, uh, His Excellency Abdurrahman Mohamed Fakir, Vice Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Indonesia. And then His Excellency Mohammad Ahmada Salum, uh, Deputy Minister of Infrastructure, Communication and Transportation of uh, Zanzibar, Tanzania. And Mr. Churchill is the very end. Uh, Mr. Churchill Anyomele uh, Katwasa, CEO of Bahari Parma, Tanzania. So I just learned that Bahari is actually Swahili. It's also like in Bahasa means uh, ocean. So uh, we are going to discuss uh, this in this session is development, develop, development cooperation, uh, Indonesia Africa development cooperation. So we are running a bit late. Now, uh, just a little bit description of what are we going to discuss. Indonesia has three flagships of area of cooperation as, as it concerns development cooperation, development cooperation, good governance, and peace building and economic development. In the last 10 years, Indonesia recognized uh, many uh, capacity building and uh, a lot of participants uh, has been uh, involved from the African continent. Now, uh, we are going to deal with three main questions in here, what kind of development cooperation that Africa hopes from Indonesia, how Africa view on triangular cooperation, if we have still have time, we are going to discuss that, and what area of cooperation that Indonesia has not yet uh, explored and that's why uh, that that's needs to be explored. Yeah. So this will, will be uh, some kind of uh, policy suggestion from uh, from uh, African counterpart. Now, with, uh, without further ado, I just would like to invite uh, His Excellency Pambang Bojonegoro. He's going to present one slide explain and, and, and depicting how uh, development cooperation so far has been uh, 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 proposed and uh, conducted uh, by Indonesia uh, to, uh, in, 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 in working together with African countries. Uh, Pak Bambang, please. Thank you, Pak Siswo. Uh, very good afternoon, everybody, Excellency Ministers, distinguished delegates, from uh, African countries and distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, Indonesia now has been active in the area of development cooperation. In the area of development cooperation, Indonesia is not just on the recipient side, but we are also now trying to be active at the donor side. And Talking about development cooperation in Indonesia, we can divide our development cooperation activities into two. One is a bilateral development cooperation, and the second would be South-South Triangular Cooperation. On the bilateral development cooperation, or basically it's a South-South, pure South-South cooperation, Indonesia has some areas of focus, uh, mostly in technical assistance and capacity building. So our activities in development cooperation are mostly in technical cooperation, uh, sorry, technical assistance and capacity building. And in Africa, I can see that we have done a lot in the area of agriculture in different countries, for example, 
fisheries with uh, Mauritania, with Algeria, and then some agriculture activities like with Ethiopia, uh, Tanzania, uh, Kenya, also with uh, Angola. So the area of agriculture, including fisheries, has been the most popular uh, bilateral development cooperation between Indonesia and some African countries. And of course, we would like to expand more by giving technical assistance and capacity building in agriculture for other African countries and of course as expanding from the existing uh, operation. And then uh, aside from the agriculture, we have been also active in the area of policy uh, dissemination, meaning that we are trying to share our best practices in development policy. One of them is policy regarding population, which is family planning. Family planning has been one of Indonesia's success. It was, I mean, our total fertility rate at one time was around five, meaning one family having five children at one time in the past. But then with family planning program now, we have total fertility rate only 2.3. 2.3 children per family, down from five children per family. And with that experience, we have been sharing these success stories, success experience with our friends in Africa, like in Sudan, in Niger, and also in some other countries, even I myself, at the time as Vice Minister of, of Finance was asked to give presentation for African countries in Dakar, Senegal. I believe in 2014 to present about the story of family planning in Indonesia. It means we are ready to give technical assistance and also capacity building in family planning if any, anybody, any friend in Africa is interested to learn more and to uh, get the understanding about family planning, planning, family planning program in Indonesia. And aside from agriculture and also family planning, now we have started our development cooperation in the area of pharmaceutical. Through one of our state-owned enterprise, PT Bio Pharma, now we have been able to cooperate with some African countries in developing vaccine. In developing vaccine, uh, for example, with Morocco, then uh, Indonesia can share our experience dealing with providing vaccine and distributing vaccine for 260 million of our population. And of course, this will be a good experience and we can work together to produce vaccine in your own country. Of course, our state-owned enterprise will be ready to be an investor, but they have to cooperate with your local company in order to produce enough vaccine for the children or for anybody who needs vaccine in your uh, respective country. Last but not least, we also have, aside from bilateral development cooperation, we have South-South Triangular Cooperation. Currently, we have one South-South tri Triangular Cooperation between Indonesia, African countries, and Islamic Development Bank. So Islamic Development Bank is more as the third party in this case that will be sponsoring the technical assistance and capacity building from Indonesia to African countries. So far, we already have 57 South South Triangular cooperation activities with 28 African countries in several areas of cooperation, agriculture, aquaculture and fisheries, vaccine, trade and investment, and many others. So 
again, we would like to open this opportunity for any uh, friend from Africa to participate in this South-South Triangular Cooperation in some of the uh, uh, focus areas. And then uh, through this South-South Triangular Cooperation Framework, between us, between Indonesia and any African country, we can share know-how, technology, innovation, policies, and other resources to overcome development challenges. So, of course, we are still now at the beginning of upper-middle-income country status. But we can share your experience. We can share with you our experience in which Indonesia, before 1990, we are still low-income country. 1990, we became we became lower middle income country, but the Asian financial crisis 1998 hit us and making us back in low income country. But then in 2003, we were back in the middle income countries, lower middle income countries. And in 2019, 2020, now we have been graduated to the upper middle income country. And we would like to share our experience in macroeconomic stability, in our fiscal management with uh, any of our uh, African friends. So in our South South Triangular Cooperation Program, we have three thematic flagship program areas, development issues, good governance and democracy, also economic issues. So please contact us for uh, any uh, South South Triangular or South South Cooperation in economic uh, and development issues. And since this event is Indonesia-Africa Infrastructure Dialogue, we would like to offer also the new type of technical assistance and capacity building related to infrastructure. Number one is we would like to share our knowledge or share our best practices in doing public-private partnership in infrastructure projects. So we already have some good examples, one in the water supply and the other in the fiber optic system. And we would like to share with you the experience of having public-private partnership in building infrastructure. It means you have to involve private sector and you don't have to depend on government budget. And the other possibility of cooperation related to infrastructure, we would like to offer you our technical assistance and capacity building in road management, irrigation or water management, as well as clean water and sanitation infrastructure. We, we are still working very hard to make sure our road infrastructure, irrigation infrastructure, and sanitation infrastructure enough for our uh, Indonesian, I mean for, for our citizens. But then, of course, we had some best practices that we would like to share with you through the experience. And of course, aside from all of this cooperation, Indonesia also offers some scholarship, especially for a master's program uh, of, supported by the government of Indonesia for anybody, uh, any, anybody from the African countries who like to continue their study, especially at master level in Indonesia. So we would like to welcome you and this is basically the highlight of our development cooperation, especially between Indonesia and Africa. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Minister Pambang. So I think the key word is uh, we are all equal partners. Uh, we are going to do sharing experience and best practices. And having, for instance, African students study in Indonesia also will, is going to enrich uh, our understanding of after culture as well. So uh, now I just would like to invite Minister Vincent, and uh, I hope that you can uh, explain to us a little bit on the, the important uh, role of development partners uh, in, in Botswana experience and uh, how the agenda of development uh, can be uh, built together between both uh, partners. Yeah. Please. Th thank you very much, Mr. Moderator, and uh, thank you, participants. I think the, the topic is very, very relevant uh, of development cooperation. 
In Africa, we are faced with many challenges, the challenges that uh, need partners. These challenges include uh, poverty, unemployment, and poor infrastructure. It is my concerted view that uh, this, we need partnerships with countries that are far advanced than ourselves, but what is critical is that it can never be one way. We believe that uh, the partnership must be able to realize uh, three objectives to make sure that it improves the lives of those uh, in developing countries to move their income to levels that are very, very satisfactory and indeed to improve the general living of people in their respective countries. As a Botswana, we, went, we, we have a diplomatic relations with uh, Indonesia that uh, uh, started in 2012. And already we have been able to gain in terms of the partnership that has developed, as indicated by my colleague, around uh, capacity building in terms of uh, scholarships. A number of our citizens already have benefited from this program and as they finish their studies, they come back to the country to make significant uh, contribution to the economy of the country. We are also, at this point in time, have different uh, programs that would need some of the skills that we do not have. And we believe that uh, by being participating in this fora uh, and having engaged the different private sectors, we've been able to appetite uh, them to be able to start thinking of uh, developing uh, programs that uh, we can partner with them in the Botswana situation. We truly believe that uh, in the global village today, no country can swim alone. We must hold hands together to be able to succeed. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. Uh, I would like to give the floor to Minister Hoso of Somalia. Uh, please, uh, can you update us on the security uh, development in, in Somalia? We have been discussing uh, before in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the holding rooms and on the law on investment and the development projects as, as it is concerned the development uh, cooperation. What will be your priority? Yeah, please. <coughs> Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I want to congratulate you uh, on your 74th anniversary of uh, your independence. Thank you. Uh, and second, I want to thank you for hosting uh, this uh, uh, dialogue. Well, the future is African. Uh, it's, it's not me that said it. I'm quoting the Chief of Staff for U.S. Africa Command uh, and Indonesia taking the initial step uh, uh, for hosting this is really great. So uh, uh, thank you for that. If uh, I come back to your questions, Somalia uh, Although we have been the first Democrats in Africa, uh, we have had our own setups. We've been to civil war for almost two decades, and uh, <clears throat> despite uh, the strategic location that we, we, we are located in, in the vast uh, 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 wealth of natural resources that we have. Uh, we've been away for a while, but now we are back. And uh, there are uh, all, almost five transition of power took place after we came back from the Civil War. So <clears throat> 
to address the question of security uh, is a national pr priority for the current government to deal with uh, security issues. And uh, if you look uh, back uh, at how the situation of Somalia was uh, four or five years ago, you will know that there is a huge difference that has taken place. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, we, where we are, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got a call. Where we are heading for is to have a really secure country. Mm -hmm. And we have taken a substantial steps as a nation to have that security uh, in the country. Uh, that is one. The other uh, uh, question, which is about the priority. You know, when a country comes back from a civil war, the first things that uh, you think about is rebuilding the country. Uh, there are enormous projects that we are, we are already uh, putting in place, some of them which have already started. Uh, the one that we are currently engaged in is uh, the uh, corridors project, what we call corridors project. Uh, it is building all the roads within Somalia, uh, all the roads that were broken, that were not attended to during the civil war, we are rebuilding them with the, uh, with the help of the African Development Bank, a real partner. Uh, we are, we are in, in, in implementing that project right now. Uh, and there are many other projects that are uh, in line <coughs> with uh, the current project. So uh, that is just a small uh, step, really, compared to rebuilding uh, a whole country that uh, has just come back from a civil war. But our hopes are high, uh, and uh, we are trying our best to retire uh, due to age. And uh, because of our absence as, as a functioning government for those years, uh, there is a capacity gap there. Uh, one of, uh, one of uh, our asset, assets is uh, those of us who uh, has been in the diaspora, mm -hmm. uh, who has been educated. Uh, most of them are coming back, and uh, that, that, that is really a great help. But that is not enough in terms of rebuilding the whole country. So capacity building is really, is really a huge uh, uh, a need, a huge gap is there in terms of, uh, in terms of all, all the ministries taking uh, uh, the tasks that they're supposed to take. Uh, because uh, when uh, you have a ministry uh, which is supposed to deal with all relevant issues. What you need is people with experience. Uh, and uh, when you have a machinery of the government, the, the civil servants who are either retired or are, are, not, are not up to the task that they are supposed to take on, uh, you can understand uh, due to the background that you need that, uh, that training. <clears throat> to get people to the stage where they can take on uh, the tasks ahead of them. So although we are filling in the gap uh, when it comes to capacity building, uh, there is still the need for much larger capacity. And for, for a country like uh, Indonesia, uh, we, we, it would be great if there are opportunities where we could uh, have our, uh, our civil servants to be given the opportunity to, be, to have the knowledge and the skills that uh, you have transferred to them. Thank you. Thank you.
So uh, in, in Africa now we have a pro, uh, program silencing the gun and I think capacity building is uh, very relevant for that particular issue. For the audience, please prepare your questions and then the, after this round we are going to have a uh, question and answer from, from the audience. Now I would like to go to Pak Fakir. Uh, he's going to have uh, some reflection on how development uh, cooperation between Indonesia and Africa so far. Uh, from the perspective of the bilateral uh, ties uh, between Indonesia and Africa. Pak Fakir, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Pak. Siswa, when I said Pak, Bapak, <laughs> meaning is uh, how you honor the person you address. This is also works in Swahili. Swahili. <laughs> Baba. Mm -hmm. So basically when we said Bapak, meaning I address all of you in honor. Of course, ibu-ibu, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's actually the, how you address uh, in, in Bahasa Indonesia. So I just like to start with uh, that what we have been doing so far in uh, development cooperation is basically the task of the government mandated by our constitution. So one of the mission mandated by our founding fathers, among other things, is to contribute to the establishment of world order based on freedom, lasting peace, and social justice. When I say social justice, meaning solidarity. So that's, this is actually the, uh, the reason why we organize, among other things, uh, Asia Africa conference in 1955 so it's not only about freedom but also about social justice if you look into the principle number nine in Bandung ten principles you'll find there the promotion of mutual interest and cooperation so that's actually, among other things, why we've been doing, we've been active in promoting development uh, cooperation with particularly with developing countries. So, and that's why from that time until say, until four or five decades afterward, we are so involved in what we call economic cooperation between developing countries and technical cooperation between developing countries. And then afterward, in 2010, before that, we add additional, uh, well, we have additional uh, mechanism by triangular triangular cooperation, meaning we also involve donor countries or organization. And uh, in our case, basically, in the past, uh, we are not really integrated. It's just like individual sectors doing this. But since 2015, we have what we call more coordinated uh, mechanism at our national level and it is of course the office of uh, Pak Bambang as uh, Minister of uh, uh, National Devel uh, Development Planning and also the office of uh, President and then of course Foreign Ministry and the Minister of Finance that coordinate all the program or coordination uh, the development uh, cooperation with all sectors, all ministries. That's how we do. Uh, and then, in 2018, last year, the, uh, the president enacted a kind of uh, government regulation uh, on grant to foreign government and institution. This is actually the embryo of our, what we call, single agency. 
So we will have like Indonesian aid. You find like US aid, AUS aid, and we'll have also soon Indonesian aid. This is what we call single agency, and it is more integrated. More integrated. So let me uh, share with you some figures when it's come to uh, what we have been doing so far since 99 to 2018. We have organized like more, almost 700 capacity building program with almost 9,000 participants from developing countries. The areas has been uh, areas has been, uh, some been mentioned by uh, Pak Bambang, uh, SMEs, investment, agriculture, food security, macrofinance, women empowerment, renewable energy, good governance, disaster management, poverty alleviation, all something to do with the SDGs. So. Uh, of course, besides training, we also provide scholarship, sending experts through third country training program, and grant various uh, technological tools for the purpose of assisting countries in needs. So basically, our program, our project, is demand-driven. De depends on the demand by our uh, friends. So if you focus, for instance, on the ICT, we will provide a kind of technical program. And if you focus, for instance, on, say, uh, microfinance, we will, we will also uh, prepare for that. So it's uh, demand driven. And another figure I just want to share with you. Uh, With the new mechanism, we will have what we call endowment fund. So we start with 70 million US dollars. But in three years, we will have like 700 million US dollars. So with this uh, many kinds of program. And uh, Well, this is actually what we intend to do for the next 20, 30 years. And, you know, now we focus ourselves on grants, technical cooperation, and assistance through international organizations. But afterward, we'll have with additional loans through co-financing with other donors. That even next, we'll we will step up with the loans, soft loan, and concessional loans. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we try to combine, of course, between not only sharing, but also now we would like to become your development partner. So we try to combine between in the one hand is sharing, but another one, it might also will have like economic added values. So any project or any program we have, it should be have additional economic values. For instance, if we do have project, development project in one of uh, African countries, say in infrastructure, we might combine also with some training program for that purpose. So, of course, we will ask our, say, our company, whether it's private or uh, state-owned company, to provide also uh, a kind of a system uh, in terms of training or other capacity building program. Thank you, Pak Siswa. Thank you, Mr. Fakir. So the key word here is demand-driven, in which the programs of uh, development cooperation will be decided together 
uh, among partners, uh, among the, the, the donors and the recipients uh, at equal basis. Uh, very beautiful. Now, I, I just would like to invite uh, the D Deputy Minister of Solum and your view, uh, Tanzania, what will be the challenge and opportunity uh, for Indonesia and African development uh, cooperation? Please. Thank you very much, Dr. Siso. Uh, first of all, I would like to take this opportunity to extend my sincere gratitude to your government for what they have given us during these two days of this conference and have got opportunities to meet with various and uh, famous people and discuss together about what is the development cooperation must be between Indonesia and, and Africa, in general and Tanzania in particular. As you know that the relationship of development cooperation is a new phenomenon to us. And it started after a second war, and it was a plan from USA in order to give aid to the European country. And then as we, we have been told yesterday from the speech of your president here, His Excellency, Honorable Widodo, that in 1955, there was a, a conference here which was called the Asia African Conference. During that conference, we started with this, what we call the development cooperation. As you know, at that period, many countries in Africa were under colonialism. So what can say, it was uh, only the political cooperation, our relation. It was not about the development cooperation. So as we know that Tanzania and Indonesia enjoyed a good relationship since the pre-independence area between Indonesia and Tanzania and also between Africa and Indonesia. As we know that We have uh, some kind of, uh, we can say, cultural bonds eh, among our people. As he said, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, the Deputy Minister here, yeah, and diversity of the people in the region, which have a vast opportunity to enhance various areas of economic cooperation so that during the culture and the diversity, we have found that your country has started to, to spearhead the cooperation between African countries and uh, your country. As you know that the, we have got a lot of uh, aid from your countries and my country benefit from that aid, especially in agriculture, field, building capacity, and also fisheries, and sometimes trade. The trade between Indonesia and uh, Tanzania now is uh, crazy. Eh? And as you know, the president of uh, Zanzibar, last year he came here in Indonesia and he made visit here in Bali. And he said during his visit here that we have to make sure that this relationship is go ahead because we are as brothers, we must come together to make sure that we have a common issue we can discuss for the benefit of our people. So that now Tanzania, we have what to say that uh, a president who focus ahead to make sure that Tanzania is becoming the country like your country, in many field. In Tanzania, we have uh, what we can say, vision two, 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 zero, two, five. Mm -hmm. And then also we have a uh, vision of two, zero, two, two. 
I got a chance to to go to the Malaysia in 1998 for the purpose of this vision. There we found that country like Indonesia, Malaysia, where we, we call a cup tigers countries, they have developed it because they have emphasized on technology. Also, human resource, capacity, capital, human resource, and also in science research. So Tanzania, we have this vision of uh, five years. We have seen that if you want to get more development, first of all, we have to curb what we call corruption. We have to have a good governable institution. Also, we have to eradicate poverty. And how we can get eradicate poverty? First of all, you have to teach your people and to give them good quality of uh, education, to have uh, basic needs, clean water, good housing. Also, we have to give them what can say capital order to make uh, any company or to make any industry. So we have a, what we call now industrialization program in Tanzania, which which call it as a main goal or objective toward the development of our country. So there is a oh, there are many opportunities now between Tanzania and Africa in general and Indonesia to get into these projects and to to finance this project. We have been here, and yesterday we saw what we have signed here together in what a very critical area, that means infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So that in our country now, we have emphasized ourselves to make sure that we construct good ports, airports, and also in Tanzania Maryland Railway, what is called Fast Railway CIA. So in order to make sure that we go the pace of the boats right way with it, you are the commerce. So I think we have a good experience from Indonesia here, because you know that Indonesia before, uh, after, maybe after 40 years, they were like us in GDP and something that. But I'm very surprised to hear that now mm -hmm. uh, GDP of Indonesia is the seventh one in the world. So it means that there's a secret behind that. So in order to make sure that we are together here and we can exchange experience ideas, we'll make sure now we will we'll be at the same track with you. So that I think that it, uh, it is always a high time for us eh, to to, to spearhead eh, our relationship, as we say, development, eh, cooperation. And development cooperation means that there is a flow of aid from, from, from any country which has uh, already been a uh, high economic growth to other country. So that if there is an inflow of that aid with a mutual benefit for the win-win situation, I think that is going to be a good idea and that is going to be uh, good for us, for historical of our leaders who uh, join it together in order to make sure that African and Indonesia, they go and uh, they, uh, they come uh, across and uh, come over any obstacle which are ahead of us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Minister Salum. So this will be capacity building that might lead to business opportunity and cooperation as well. Uh, again, so, uh, for the audience who wish to lodge uh, the question, please do so. Now, uh, I would like to invite Mr. Katwaza from Bahari uh, Pharmaceuticals. Uh, what is your expectation uh, how the development cooperation can help uh, business uh, in, in, in pharmaceuticals? Yeah. Uh, 
and how you see uh, development cooperation for this business perspective, please. Okay, thank you, Baba, and uh, ministers, and uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, okay, I will start to uh, developing the development cooperation of Indonesia and the Africa, where it was establishing uh, long term in the value sector, and uh, many it was focusing on economic mutual benefit between the two country, two two parties, Africa and Indonesia. Uh, and most of many platform, it was to strengthen the collaboration and sharing business experience between the government and the private sector. Uh, among main sector which has been focused in the, it was agriculture mainly, and development of infrastructure and the other sector in Africa and Indonesia. Uh, and then. Uh, there was a bilateral relationship between Indonesia to Tanzania, which was established in 1964, and uh, it was only agriculture on that particular time. And then in 2011, we have established an organization, Indonesia-Tanzania Joint Agriculture Cooperation Committee. This cooperation was focused on capacity building through training, joint research, expand the market for agriculture product. But for the now, now the, the cooperation has also included other sectors like pharmaceutical and, uh, and the infrastructure. So, but for the, now for the farmer, because uh, I'm belong from farmer, in fact, we have a very uh, big opportunity for Indonesia to do pharma business in Africa. Uh, for if you if you take the in Tanzania, we are about uh, 57 million, and uh, if you go to East Africa, uh, we have about 150 million. Then if you go to Saudi countries, we are about 350 million. Mm. So this is a big number of population where the farmer business community from Indonesia. They can venture on it. And uh, for information, in Tanzania, local manufacturers, we have only 10 small and medium manufacturers. And all those 10, there are four medium, and the rest are small. But there is no medical device manufacturer in Tanzania. So, and the budget, for the government to procure the medicine annually is one billion US dollar. But out of one billion US dollar, it's only 10% are purchased local pr product because we have very, the production is too low. So the rest 90% go outside. This is an opportunity for Indonesia companies to come to Tanzania to invest in Tanzania and make sure that they capture now this market, which is huge in Tanzania. So, uh, and for now also, uh, the government of Tanzania is trying to, to push industrialization in the country. So there is a lot of incentive for people who are coming to invest in Tanzania on any field but I'll talk about pharma because I'm long from pharma. Yeah, pharma is a priority. So if any company from Indonesia will be interested to come to Tanzania, they are welcome. They can come on their own or they can do a joint venture by local companies and the market is huge. As I've been telling you, it is in Tanzania, it is in East Africa, it is in certain countries. And for the late this year, no, last year there was agreement between third countries to do pool procurement of medicine and medical device. In the country which was chosen or selected, it is Tanzania. So Tanzania government, through medical store department, they are procurement on behalf of third countries. So this also is an advantage. Once you're working with Tanzania, 
it is a or it is a window to go to study countries. So I I still emphasize that the the, the Tanzania, the uh, Indonesia business community on the farmer, they should rush and come as soon as possible to Tanzania to invest or to do trading business because the business is big. And my suggestion uh, as a whole that, uh, you see, business is information. And I could see there, was lack, there is a lack of information of what is available in Indonesia to Africa countries, especially in my country. So we need to create awareness of products available in Indonesia for export in Africa. That would be one thing. And another thing is to create a regular meeting where we can discuss between Africa and Indonesia on what we are facing and how we're going to solve the problem in the way forward. And lastly, we should also uh, increase, we should also, Indonesia, as you have a little bit developed compared to Africa, make sure that you transfer technology to Africa. Thank you. Thank you. So there's also about procurement and uh, uh, the opportunity for Indonesia and Tanzania, especially on pharmaceutical business, to, to do some sort of cooperation for Africa. Now, I, I would like to go back again to uh, pa, 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 Minister Pambang. Uh, what will be the likely program for the next five years? We understand there is a coastal uh, countries like Tanzania, fishery is very important, but it's also hinterland country like Botswana. How, how do you perceive this? Pa? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Pa Siswa. Uh, first of all, of course, in the next five years, we hope that the establishment of Indonesia Aid as a single agency for technical assistance, capacity building, uh, in the term of South-South cooperation, you know, can really be effective. And with this single agency, then our uh, support for Africa, I think, will be uh, better and will be more systematic. For the next five years, there are several programs to be developed uh, for Indonesia and Africa cooperation. The first one I already mentioned about uh, training and technical assistance for infrastructures, like the theme of this event, uh, the type of infrastructure that uh, we are trying to offer to uh, our friends in Africa would be in irrigation and water management, hydropower generation, as well as clean water and sanitation. And of course, this will help you know, the hinterland of Africa related to the agriculture. And then to do the South-South cooperation through technical assistance and uh, capacity building, we have the resources center that will support our activity in uh, many of our focus area, including Africa. So we have resource center in marine, fisheries, agriculture. So basically we are ready to do this technical assistance and uh, capacity building in the field of agriculture and fisheries. The other that, will, that might be uh, a little bit less popular but becomes more important is disaster risk redu reduction and mitigation. Indonesia is on the ring of fire. We have to deal with so many types of natural disaster. You can name from earthquake, volcanic eruption, even tsunami, and you know we, we, we suffer of two, I think, quite big uh, tsunami hit uh, last year. And then uh, we also have to deal with the uh, forest fire, we have to deal with flood, landslide, so many types of disaster. Of course, we are still learning how to deal with the disaster, how to mitigate the disaster. But at the same time, since we have done, I think, one big recovery of disaster in Aceh, for example, uh, for both 
earthquake and tsunami, so we would like also to share our experience through technical assistance and capacity building in disaster risk mitigation. Others would be, as mentioned by one of the panelists, in pharmaceutical. We will be more intensive in pharmaceutical. We will do not just technical assistance and capacity building. We will do joint investment. We will do investment in African countries, and hopefully we can have partners from your side. So we can spread further vaccine serum for, of course, the health of the people uh, in uh, Africa, especially children. And then uh, we also had uh, resources from our ministry. Uh, we can share our experience in development planning, macroeconomic management, uh, fiscal management that I think will be important for many of uh, African countries since we have to deal now with some uncertainty in global economy. And of course, every single country in Africa has aspiration someday to be part of the middle or high income uh, economy. Aside from that, uh, we also have resources in supporting the transportation especially road engineering. And of course, uh, we can do more technical assistance in infrastructure through this type of uh, resources. Last but not least, as I mentioned earlier, we have this South-South Triangular Cooperation with Islamic Development Bank. So please don't hesitate to contact us to utilize this uh, South-South Triangular Cooperation because Islamic Development Bank is ready to support the program. We are ready to, uh, to provide technical assistance and capacity building in certain areas, agriculture, fisheries, health, population, vocational, technical education, pharmacy, planning and budgeting, microfinance, transportation, technology, industry, disaster risk reduction, mitigation, Islamic finance, and trade. So there are a lot of varieties that we can work together with the support of the Islamic Development Bank. So uh, last but not least, please don't hesitate to contact us through Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Ministry of National Development Planning of Indonesia so we can have more uh, cooperation with uh, our friends in African continent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Just quickly, I, I would like to invite everyone to, uh, in one minute, uh, give us uh, another suggestion on what kind of program that you really need uh, in the next five years. Uh, not necessarily a lot of program, but the most uh, that become your priority. I might start with you, sir. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, I think I'll not hesitate and I'll not wait for the Minister of Foreign Affairs. I will make my contact here and now. Uh, food, and food security is very, very critical for my country. We are dependent on rain feds, and as we are all aware, the climatic conditions are not uh, very, very, uh, we cannot be certain as to when the rains will fall. And an indication that uh, you would be able to, we have experience on irrigation agriculture, that is a priority for us. Also, you have indicated that uh, you've been able to move from middle income to upper middle income. We are trapped, mm. and we would wish to uh, have experience from yourselves how you've been able to break from this trap and be able to move into middle income. And in terms of uh, economic and technical cooperation, that basically we would be able to do uh, via bilateral uh, meetings with uh, the ministry's concerned. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Perhaps uh, from Somalia? Yeah, some suggestion. What, what is the most priority program that you expect for the next five years? Yeah, uh, thank you a lot. If I uh, summarize it in one minute, I would say uh, since uh, uh, we have, uh, my country came back from a civil war now, there's a lot of, uh, uh, there's a lot of damage done to the votes of the country and uh, uh, you know because of building the roads uh, it, it creates uh, uh, helps with the security 
uh, the economic growth of the country. It creates employment because 73% uh, of our population is under the age of 30 years. So that gives massive employment to, to, to our youngsters. It helps with the trade within the country uh, from state to state uh, and also connects us to the uh, region, uh, 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 to the regional countries, uh, Kenya, Ethiopia, so on and so forth. Uh, and also it helps with the government. It helps the, 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 the cell service delivery of, of the government to reach areas which uh, sometimes are not uh, possible under the conditions of the roads. And you know roads need maintenance all the time, even for those countries who have not been in a civil war, they still need maintenance all the time. Imagine a country that has been uh, uh, almost two decades out of civil war. So our main priority, also, although the needs are vast, our main priority is the infrastructure of the country and mainly the roads. Thank you. Thank you. Pak Fakir, perhaps? <laughs> well, just to add to Pak Bambang's uh, plan for a future cooperation, I just want to show how powerful this So, try to identify how many per percent of our population are internet users or gadget users. This is very powerful. So, anything related to ICT and digital economy might be a very good uh, or effective way to improve the quality of life. Mm -hmm. So, that's one thing. Another thing is, of course, creative economy. Well, actually, you, you can combine both creative economy and digital uh, related uh, business. Uh, from small, medium enterprises, we have what we call startup. They, they start with only using this. And in Indonesia, some of them become unicorn. So creative economy is also another things that we, look, we should look into as part of our uh, cooperation and development cooperation programs. So this, just to add that creative economy and digital or ICT related business is actually very critical in promoting uh, the quality of life. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Pak Fakir. There is a question from the floor. I think this uh, uh, is being addressed to Deputy Minister Salum from T T Tanzania. The question is, what are the key strengths that Indonesia should have in order to be more attractive than China, Japan, and other countries as a reliable cooperation partner for African countries? Thank you very much. As I said before, that we have a cultural bond between Indonesia and Tanzania and Africa at all, because all we are talking about the development cooperation. Mm. So in order to achieve that goals, I have tried to summarize here a few words. I say that our governments, I mean of Indonesia and Africa, we need to turn into joint bilateral commissioner which will hate in social economic and social and economic opportunities and open new areas of investment. That should be in line with national development plans that are geared up toward enhancing economic growth for the welfare of the, our people, to exchange visit, to exchange technology, and 
last but not least, to make sure what we have planned, it must be did and also must be utilized for the benefit of our nation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Katwasa, you are the only business person in this panel. And the question I think is for you, how is the current trade war affect trade between Indonesia and Africa? Can you repeat it again? How is the current trade war between America and China is going to affect business between Indonesia and Africa? <laughs> this is one question from the audience. <laughs> Thank or you, might Baba, not be affected uh, at all. For this person, uh, it's true that uh, these are big countries and uh, they all control the world economy. So the war between China and the America, also we as underdeveloped countries, we are affected. But uh, uh, to me as a businessman, I think somewhere we have to look the way through because uh, if China cannot control supply to U.S. as it is, and the same as U.S., then we, we have to go on that line to talk to other countries like Indonesia that instead of going back to China or U.S., then you should come to Indonesia and do the same thing, the same product which you are buying from U.S. and, and China. That's one. And the second thing, which can help us, of course, to to grow is an, uh, as an in Indonesia and Africa, especially Tanzania, is because of our relationship, which has been for a long time, and our mutual understanding. So. In order to do business, always the first thing it is mutual understanding. The second thing is this paper agreement. But as far as, as I understand to me, this long relationship between Tanzania and Indonesia, it is a, a, a step ahead which can help us to do more than what we are doing now. Thank you. Thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, I think we complete our uh, one hour from 15.50 to 16.50 now. I uh, just would like to, uh, to, to, to sum up uh, about what we have been discussing so far. The first one, uh, I think number one, uh, development cooperation is about uh, equal partnerships, about sharing of experience and best practices in which the two sides can learn, mutually learning one to the other to the benefit of all. Number two, uh, in the African situation, we have countries with uh, a post-conflict uh, situation in which capacity building is pretty much needed for this particular need, uh, peacekeeping uh, operation uh, that we also offer to them. But actually, there is also countries which now enjoy uh, stable growth in the region in which capa capacity building can also be directed toward the uh, to, to boost the business uh, of, uh, in, in the region. Number three, uh, single agency, Indonesia is now is preparing single agency, and this will be demand driven. So that's why a dialogue like this to, to, to link and match uh, the needs of uh, Africa and something that Indonesia can offer also uh, very important. The next five years, uh, as ex explained by pa Pambang, we offer many programs, uh, infrastructure development, uh, particularly on uh, hydropowers that uh, can be also one source of energy, uh, marine uh, fisheries and agricultures, uh, but from the African side there is some input also for food security, uh, on creative economy, and connectivities and maintenance. I think this is uh, the things that we have been discussing so far. I, I, I think uh, we need to, have a, to give a very big applause to our panels uh, this afternoon. And herewith, I would like to give the microphone back uh, to the Master of Ceremony.
Thank you. Let's give a big one, of, uh, one round of applause for the moderator and, of course, to all speakers. Excellency, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, with that, we have concluded this whole program of Indonesia-Africa Infrastructure Dialogue. And with that being said, we hope you enjoyed the rest of your stay in Bali and we wish you a safety flight back home. Thank you and wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good afternoon.